Hi, I'm Cindy. I am the owner of Celine's Gems. I make polymer clay earrings for people with and without pierced ears. Um, today, I am going to show you how to use a texture mat from the Clay Impress. And the Clay Impress is one of my favorite shops. I'm not endorsed by her. I do not get um, anything extra or special. <laughs> For saying nice things about her shop i just literally love her things and love her as a human um anywho i am going to be making some huggy hoops and i've noticed from a lot of other makers that they kind of struggle to make these so i wanted to do a quick video to just kind of show my technique and what i do and everything else when i'm making these I'm going to be using, I have some black clay and fuzz stuck to my finger apparently. Um, I have a lot of, I don't think all, but a lot of her, a lot of the clay impress huggies, her cutters. Um, these are actually barrette cutters that she did a custom order for me for over a year ago. Um, but yeah, I have those. I have the heart huggy, and then I have the sunflower huggy somewhere. I just don't have it in this stuff because I'm working on sunflowers. So these are the three shapes I use the most of. This one and this one are my go-to. Um, today I'm gonna use this frilly one. So I will put a link in the comments below of where to purchase these items and I'll list what I use as well. So today I'm going to be using the Spanish lace texture mat. Mine just has some purple stuck on it. It's, it's a mess like me. So I mean, that is what it is. So I roll out my clay to the thickness that I like it. I take my texture mat, I lay it on, I grab my roller, and I roll over it. Sometimes, oh, also you'll hear a bubble machine going and my toddler, um, because I'm a mom first, <laughs> and sometimes we just play bubbles in the house. So anyway, um, if you hear screams, it's okay. So when you're rolling this out, you want to push hard, but you don't need to push too hard or else you're going to smush your clay and it'll be uneven. So you try to apply even pressure as you're rolling. Sometimes you can use like a thickness guide, which are like little sticks. I've seen people use paint sticks from like a hardware store on each side and it kind of just, it doesn't allow the roller to go too far or too hard. Um, or rulers or popsicle sticks, whatever. I don't use them. I live dangerously. So here we are. All right. So we're on there. This is one of my favorites. My favorite texture mats. Now, see, some of the purple transferred. I don't care. Oh, thank you. Can you go put that back? More. Thank you. It's for the mailman. Can you go put it back, please? Go put it, uh-uh. Put it in the box, baby, by the door. I had a package thief for a minute. Um, I'll just reuse this purple area here. But I'm just kind of take, press down evenly. I give it a little wiggle just in case, just for good, good measure. Um, when I'm making Huggies, I try to find patterns that are the same. And I don't know. Yeah, you can kind of pull up the little purple bits. Anyway, I'll use that that one for myself. But if you go over to the pieces that don't have anything in them, just push down. Uh -oh. Chaos. 
So anyway, so that's, let's see, I think maybe I'll do one more. There. And here. Okay. Now, if I didn't have the purple stuck in it, I would use these more. Baby, go check upstairs. Go check up. Go check upstairs for her baby. Okay, so like I said, some of these have purple in it, but I'm doing this for for educational purposes. So, I take my blade, my tissue blade, and slide it under and pull it off. Now, one of the cool things Scarlett does is she sells a dowel rod that you can also get on her website when you purchase the Huggy Hoop Cutters, and it's Okay, baby, please be careful. It's a wooden dowel rod that you can wrap these around. Um, I personally whoops, like to use a little mini cannoli tube. And I have pretty good luck with it. I feel like the clay sticks really well. Um, some people have rolled aluminum foil onto their dowel rods to make it kind of stick a little bit more. I just prefer this. So... You stick it on. You make sure it's straight so that you don't have like a crooked huggy when it comes out of the oven. And that's it. Okay, just like that. You can do that with the rest of them. Now to bake these, you bake your clay as usual. I do um, I have Sculpey, so I do 275 for an hour. Um, and then I will sometimes stick like the edge. I'll stand it up and put it in to a little bit of rice. So it kind of stands and doesn't fall out. It's up to you. I've also just stood them up on my tile to cook and had no issues. Oh, Rita! oh my gosh. She's having a squishmallow party. Um, we got little mini squishmallows today. Or this weekend at Costco. Okay. Oops, I'm out of camera range. Sorry. Oh my it's somewhere. I'll help you find it in a minute. Yep, I'll help you find it in one minute, baby. And just kind of stick it on there. And again, just like so. And then you'll bake your clay, normal time and temperature, and I'll show you what they look like after and how to assemble them, how I assemble them. Okay, so my pieces are out of the oven and they stayed on just like this the whole time i'm gonna pop these off because it's super satisfying that's it look how perfectly they hold their shape okay so to get the posts onto these you choose which side you want to be on the front for this one. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Seeing he doesn't want to play right now, baby. Okay, so now that they're off, I've chosen which way I want to be the front and which I want to be the back and I'm going to adhere them. Here, adhere the posts. So I use these small little posts. I wanna say that they're like four millimeter. And so these have a lot of flex to them when they're cured properly. They're not gonna go anywhere. So and keep in mind, they're also not finished yet because I don't finish until after. So I'm gonna, Add my adhesive, 
stretch this out and I just kind of find the most flush point instead of like adhering in the curve where it could pop. So it'll look like this. And I glue my post. Ah! See, I did what you shouldn't do. I glued it in the curve. Okay, it's okay. Kind of got to go like right in that first groove on these frilly ones. There we go. So just like this. Do it with your other one. I'm going to glue the rest and then I'll be back. Okay, so I am back. My huggies are done. They've been adhered. Their posts have been adhered. I'm going to now come in with some translucent liquid clay. I have my oven set. To 275 I think you're only supposed to or you only have to go um, okay good job I, I think you too. only have to go 30 minutes with um, liquid clay but I like to I like to go a little bit longer just to make sure so I am I just did here Put the liquid clay over the top and then I have a little tray here with some rice okay baby and I stick it in there like that so that it stands up well done please so that um she's playing animal crossing I'm sorry um so it sits in the bed of rice so that it doesn't fall over so I'm gonna continue to do the rest of these now Okay, now these are all set up. I have some um, pieces to some other earrings and I'm going to stick these into the oven to bake for about 45 minutes um, and then I'll pull them out and they'll be good to go and I'll pop back on to show you. Okay, so I'm back with my huggy hoops. They are finished and this is the final result. So the posts are attached with the liquid clay they're not going anywhere they have some give which they should so that they move with your ear but yeah that's it so simple so I will link everything below all the tools that I've used uh, to make these beautiful black lace huggy hoop earrings and um, yeah go try it out let me know how it goes and if you have any tips or tricks that um, you think could help me, please let me know.